Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe and this is the next episode in the Coding a 2D Game Engine in Java series. Now, I know I should probably be releasing a physics episode right now, but I haven't prepared for it and physics is hard for me, so if I don't prepare for it, it's not going to be good. So, we're just going to continue with the Game Engine series this week. Now, before we start this episode, I have released a survey asking if you guys want a Discord server or any other type of social media. And I would really appreciate it, even if you don't want to, to fill out the survey because it helps me to know if you don't want one just as much to know if you do want one. So please go to the description and fill that out real quick. That would be really helpful. Also, I'm having some screen capture type issues. So I'm using Microsoft OneNote here, but the original Microsoft OneNote broke. And so now I'm using the older version, which is really slow and very annoying. So if you know any other good drawing apps to draw stuff where you can just draw easily with a pen and you can also pick shapes and draw shapes and stuff, please leave a comment and let me know because that would be really cool so I can stop using this and use something better. Okay, anyways, in this episode, what we're going to be doing is what you should see on the screen right now. We're converting our mouse screen to uh, proper world coordinates in this episode. And we've done this before which you should recognize this because this is from the first episode, which uh, check the top right corner and click on that link if you haven't seen that. This is how we did it in the beginning when the world took up the entire window's width. And we're still going to be using the same technique, but we have a problem because now we have a game viewport that is somewhere inside of this overall window. And so we can use the same technique we used here. What we just have to do is we have to convert first from our mouse position, which could be like anywhere on this entire window into a relative coordinate to this. So basically if the mouse position was here, what we would want it to say is, okay, it's this many pixels from this corner, instead of saying it's this many pixels from this corner. And the way you do that is very simply, you just subtract this mouse screen position from uh, the bottom left or top left corner, whichever way you're coordinated. So if we subtract out subtract this minus this what we'll end up with is this vector right here which is the one we want and then we can continue with the rest of the calculations the exact same way that we did before and everything should work just fine and then we'll have to do one other thing which is i am gui currently wants to capture mouse coordinates or capture mouse inputs if we click onto the i'm gui window which is here so every time we click onto this window it doesn't do anything because I am GUI is capturing that event and we're not passing it through to our application. So what we need to say is if the mouse is anywhere outside of this, then let I am GUI do with it what I am GUI wants. But if it is inside of it, we want to capture the mouse event because this is something we care about. So very brief preface to this episode. Now let's get started. All we have to do is subtract this corner and capture those mouse events appropriately. So let's see how we do that. All right, so I have my game window open here just to accentuate exactly what I'm talking about. If you'll notice, when I move the mouse, the object is not tracking the mouse properly. And that's because we're not calculating world coordinates as if the world started here. Instead, we're calculating them as if the world started here. And so you'll notice when I go up to this top left corner, the game object actually is in the top left corner of the world. And if I go to the bottom right corner, it's in the bottom right corner, which is what we would expect. So now we just need to say, okay, just act like it's starting from here instead and ending here, which is what we will do. So in order to do this, we need to go into our mouse listener because this is where the magic happens. I'm going to take these two functions, which are the important ones, and I'm going to copy them and paste them down here below, get mouse button down or whatever. And then we're going to have to create some new variables to help us out. So we just need a couple of vector 2Fs. We'll do private vector 2F. And this will be uh, game viewport pose. And we'll just set that to a new vector 2F. And then we'll say private vector 2F game viewport size. And that's also a new vector 2F. And this will just help us. Um, I also don't really like the way that this works. Ideally, we would have a different method for doing this. I'll show you just the method that I'm using right now. And then you guys can let me know in the comments if you can think of a better solution to do this. Okay, and we're going to create two setters for these two. And if we go back down here, we'll just modify this a little bit. Instead of doing the equals there, we'll just say uh, dot set. And then we will change that right there. 
and we'll go over here. We'll say dot set instead. And alt enter on the variable name to pull up that menu to select uh, create the setter for it. Okay, so right now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be manually setting the game viewport's position and size. So inside of our game, that would be uh, this top left corner would be the viewport position, the top left or the bottom left corner. I can't remember what Y coordinates we're using for uh, reference, but it'll be the position and then the size will be the size of this rectangle right here. And so I don't like the way that this works once again. I think there is probably a better solution, but this is what I've used and I just have been too lazy to fix it. So I'll show you how to use this method to get it done, but there's probably a better method. Okay, and so we can literally use almost this exact same uh, method, right? Except instead of doing this, what we want to do is we just want it to be relative to the game viewport. So instead of doing this, what we'll do is we'll just say minus get dot game viewport pose dot x. And then we will say over instead of the windows width, we'll say get dot game viewport size dot x. So the game viewport is our frame of reference now and we'll just do that which should get us the correct results and then we'll go down here and we will do the same thing instead of uh, window.get height minus get y we'll take that out and we will do minus get dot game viewport pose dot y and we may have to change this and then we'll do divide by the get dot game viewport size dot y okay and uh, one other thing, this class is completely static, so I'm not sure why I made it a singleton. You could probably get rid of these gets and just make these all static variables, but I don't feel like changing that right now. So that's some other things that you could do to improve just getting things and stuff because this is kind of annoying and it's not really necessary. Okay, but that should be all we need to do. And then everything else should work the same way. Now, the only thing that I'm worried about is um, when I was testing this earlier, uh, when we do get inverse projection dot multiply, what this does is it actually creates a, um, it, it modifies the actual uh, inverse projection matrix. And so I'm going to change this up a little bit because I'm not sure if this will mess things up, but we'll go into here and we'll just say matrix 4F. Uh, this is going to be our view projection. And then I'm going to go into here and I'm just going to say that the view projection is equal to the window dot get seen. Well, yeah, window dot get seen dot camera dot get inverse uh, view. I'm not sure why I did projection view here too. So yeah, we should do view times projection. And then I'll say dot multiply window dot get seen dot camera dot get inverse projection and then we'll do a comma there and if you do the parameters you'll notice that this is destination and we'll say destination is view projection and this is definitely hard to see so I am going to do a couple things to make this easier first of all uh, let's just get the camera we'll say camera camera equals window dot get seen dot camera and then we can remove all of this with camera and we can remove all of this with camera and we'll just initialize view projection here. Okay, there we go. So now we get the camera, we get the view projection just by multiplying the camera's inverse view times the inverse projection. And then inside of here, we will do temp dot multiply that view projection. All right, and so when you do the multiply on the matrix like this, what it does is it places the result of this multiplication into this matrix, which is what we want. And then I'm just going to copy all this and we will just paste it right here like so and that should be good. Okay, now fingers crossed this should work properly. However, we are missing one step. We never actually set the game viewport, game viewport position or size and we do need those in order for this to work correctly. So let's go to our game view window and set those appropriately. And this is where I'm saying I don't really like the way this is working, but this is the way it's working. So we can get the game viewport position pretty easily right after we set the cursor pose right here. This is, we're saying, hey, this is where we want to put the game viewport. What we can do is, I'll just do a few spaces. I'm gonna say I am vec two 
top left equals new I am vec2. I'm going to say I am GUI dot get cursor screen pose. And I'm going to say put it into top left. Then we'll say top left dot x minus equals I am GUI dot get scroll x. And top left dot y minus equals I am GUI dot get scroll y. And this is very similar to what we were doing down here too. We subtract the scroll x to get that out of the way. And what does get cursor screen pose do? Well, what that does, we see it says it gets the cursor position in absolute screen coordinates zero to display size. So display size would be like the actual window size. And what this means is that uh, when we get this cursor screen pose, this is going to be absolute in terms of our window. And that's what we want because now that we have the top left of our game viewport in absolute screen position coordinates. It's perfect. That's what we were looking for. And then we just subtract the scroll X and scroll Y to make sure we don't actually pick that up. Then very simply, we can just say mouse listener dot set dot set. And we don't have our setters for some reason. So let's go into mouse listener. And I thought we did. Yeah, set. Oh, and these are not static. Make this static so that we can actually use these. And then we can just change that to get and change that to get. Okay. And then we'll go back into the game view pose or game view window. Now we can say mouse listener dot set game viewport pose. We'll do that one first. It's a new vector 2f top left dot x and top left dot y. And then we'll go ahead and say mouse listener dot set game viewport size. And that's just a new vector 2f. And we already have that. It is just window size dot x and window size dot y, which you'll remember we have right here get centered or get largest size for viewport. And we store that in window size. Okay. So that should be all we need. Now, if we start this, fingers crossed, it should work the correct way. Okay. And it does, except you'll notice that our Y positions are flipped. So uh, that was one thing I forgot about. Um, I am GUI has their Y coordinates flipped compared to OpenGL. So we can go into mouse listener and we can fix this very easily just by negating uh, this current Y right here. So if we just do a negative and wrap this in parentheses, that should flip all of the Y coordinates and then we will get the appropriate positions. There we go. And now it's all working the way it should. Um, you'll see it's a little bit off with the X position. And that looks like it might be a result of floating point precision errors because you'll see that it looks off here, but then the farther we go in, the more precise it gets. So I'm guessing this is floating point precision errors. It could be something else, but for the most part, it works properly. But if we click, we can't place it down anywhere. And why is that? That's because I'm GUI is consuming those click events. So what we can do is we can go into I'm GUI layer. We encountered this before too. And the way we fixed it is we said, if uh, I'm GUI does not want the mouse capture, then uh, we'll call our mouse button callback. But in this case, I'm GUI does want it, but we still want it too. So we'll say, or not, and then we'll say game view window dot get want capture mouse. So we'll use the same syntax as I'm GUI here. Then we'll just go into our game view window and create a method that does this. And we'll say control N game view window. And then right here, we'll just say public static boolean get want capture mouse and we will just return when when do we want the mouse capture we want the mouse capture whenever the mouse is inside of this little area which is our game viewport right we want it when it's in here but if it's out here we do not want it so we want it in here we don't want it out here and the way we can get this is by storing a few static variables that will help us out so we'll just go in here and we'll say private static float left x right x top y bottom y and these will be the X's and Y's of our game viewport. And then we can just set those up here. We'll just say left X equals window pose dot X or left X down here. Left X equals top left dot X left Y or <laughs> top Y equals top left dot Y. And then we'll say right X equals top left dot X plus window size dot X. And then we'll say uh, bottom y equals top left dot y plus window size dot y. And this should help us out because now we can go in here and we can just say return uh, whether our mouse is within those boundaries. So we'll just say return mouse listener dot get 
x and this is just the screen x and then we'll just say is greater than or equal to left x and mouse listener dot get x is less than or equal to right x and mouse listener dot get y is greater than or equal to uh, bottom y and mouse listener dot get y is less than or equal to top y and I believe this should be minus we'll see we might have to fix the y's here but let's see if this works so we go into here we click it's not working okay and I just had it flipped so this top left is top left to I'm GUI but it's actually bottom to us so if you just make this bottom y and then top y is top left y plus window size dot y then if we go back in you should get your mouse events when you click inside so as long as I'm in here and I click I can place items but if I go outside and I click it does not place it down because I'm not inside the game viewport. Okay, so now we can actually place objects into our game world uh, with our game viewport located as it is. And this should work if your camera starts moving too. This is good. You know, we're making progress. In the next episode, what we'll probably do is get around to making the camera move when you press the middle mouse button. If you guys have any uh, comments about how to use a better solution to do this, let me know and I may change this up in the future because I don't really like the way this works, but it works. Um, that's it for this tutorial though, guys. If you like this, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.